Good morning, everybody. Today on First Step Science, we are doing evergreen investigation. So we're gonna take a look at a lot of our evergreen trees that grow here nearby in the northern area. And we're gonna see how to identify them and just what they're all about and why they stay evergreen, the needles. So I'm gonna start with a story, and this is a how and why story. Um, and I like to tell this story this time of year and also in the fall when the leaves start falling off the trees because it's a great story. It helps us notice things about what's out in nature and what the trees are doing. So it's a story from the Cherokee tradition and it, when all the plants and trees were first created, they were given a challenge. They were told and asked to see if they could stay awake for seven nights in a row. That's a long time. You know, after I stay awake one night, I start to get sleepy. But could the plants and the trees stay awake for a whole seven nights? That was their challenge. So on the first night, all of the trees, easy breezy, you know, stay up all night, stay awake. They made it. All the plants and trees stayed awake for at least one night. And on the second night, most of them stayed awake again for another night. But by the third night, some of the plants were getting tired and some of the trees were getting tired. Then one by one, they started dropping off and falling asleep. But <laughs> night after night, a few more trees. Oh, the oaks fell asleep. Oh, the maples fell asleep. Oh, the birches fell asleep. One by one, they all fell asleep. But by the seventh night, guess who was still awake? All of the, <laughs> all of the fir trees and the cedar trees and some pine trees and some fir trees. Did I say that already? Yeah. And some spruce trees. They were still awake. They were still awake, yay, and still green, still going. So a voice said, you have endured. <laughs> you have endured, so you will receive a gift. All, all the other plants and animals, they're going to have to sleep through the whole winter. But you will never lose your leaves, and you'll be able to make it through the, the windiest, coldest, freezingest winter. And you'll be a reminder that even in the darkest times, some things remain and are evergreen. So that's my evergreen story. And that's pretty cool. Well, I like how and why stories because they kind of teach us science. And they help us remember things. And whenever this story helps me um, to look to nature and to remember what's out there and what's going on out there right now. Well, a lot of the trees and leaves, you know, like our oak and our maple, <laughs> they've lost their leaves. They dropped all their leaves. They call that deciduous. Woo! And they've all fallen down. They were all pretty colors this fall. But now they're all brown and all those trees are asleep. Why did they do that? But then there's still some of the trees out there. They're all green. And they're still doing their making food for the tree thing with the green color and the chlorophyll, they're still awake, they're still going. How can they do that? Because the weather is getting colder and colder. So the story reminds me to look to nature. And the voice said, you have endured. Well, what does endure mean? It means survive. So how do these trees, that's the question, that's the question this story brings up to me. How do these trees survive the whole winter? So that's what we're going to look at up close. Um, first, we're going to look at how they survive. We're going to take a look at some of my twigs here that I've got. And then we're going to look even closer at them to see which kind, because there's all kinds of evergreens. There's pines, there's spruces, there's cedars, there's firs. We're going to look and see, that, see if we can tell the difference. Now, if you are joining us on this video, you probably got a chance, I hope, to go out and collect some of your own twigs so you can take a look at the ones that you brought and take a look and we're gonna see how we can identify them. So let's get started. Okay, so how, 
how do these evergreen trees make it through the winter? Think about winter. It's cold, right? And, you know, I've got some water right here. What happens to water that the trees need to grow and live? All plants need water, you know, and people too, but what happens to water in the winter? It freezes and it snows. So the trees can't get a hold of it. They can't suck it up through their roots and up into their, up into their trunk and up into their leaves. And that's why the deciduous trees kind of lose their leaves. They'd freeze. And plus it would be so dry. Winter is actually a dry time because they can't access the water. It's all frozen. And it, sometimes it rains, but most often it snows. So trees have to make it through some a really dry time. So take a look. So if you're out there, take a little piece of a twig off of your branch. And I want you to look at the needles up really close and kind of use your fingernail to scratch some of the needles. The needles are actually the tree's leaves and they have a little waxy coating on them. That's one of their survival, um, that's one of their survival gifts or adaptations. <laughs> They've got waxy coating on each, whoops, you can't see that. There we go, on the needle. And that keeps the water or the moisture inside so the tree can conserve water. The water will stay, the water that the tree needs for the leaves, it's right inside there and the waxy coating, it's kind of like <laughs> saran wrap or something, keeping that moisture inside. The wax paper that wax paper does that too. So take a look at your needles, scratch them a little bit with your fingernail, and you can feel that waxy coating. <laughs> and all of my branches that I brought today have that. They can they kind of feel waxy, they kind of feel smooth. Yep, they have that waxy coating. That helps keep the moisture inside because the needles are leaves and they have to make it through the winter in sort of a low moisture setting. Okay, so that's one survival gift that the trees were given, or they adapted, yeah. And the second one <laughs> is sap. Okay, when I think of sap, I think of maple syrup. How about you? <laughs> well, sap in trees is like the blood of a tree, and it's, it carries the moisture and the water and the nutrients up the trunk and out to the branches and out to the leaves and it's mostly water so again what's going to happen when it gets cold to a lot of trees it would freeze so in some of the deciduous trees my maple and my oak sap goes down into the roots and is stored there all winter because the tree can't use it <laughs> it would be all frozen and you know our leaves that are pretty and green, they would be all frozen. So the sap, which is mostly water, freezes. But in pine trees, the sap, you know, and for maple syrup, of course, you have to boil it down and down and down and get rid of some of that moisture. That's how come it's thick. But have you ever um, touched, the end? I, I, <laughs> I clipped all these branches, and guess what? I got all sticky. That was the sap. And if you cut some too, you probably got a little bit of sap. There was a lot of sap in some of the pine trees. And if you ever have decided to climb a pine tree, you're gonna get it all over your hands. The sap in pine trees is a lot thicker than a maple or an oak, which lose their leaves because <laughs> they need their sap all winter long. And the stickier it is, the more the less water is in it, so the less it will freeze. So that's another one of their adaptations or gifts. <laughs> their sap doesn't freeze. Pretty cool. Um, I kind of like that. But of course, you know, it, oh, and if you got a, a real Christmas tree and you cut off part of it to trim and bring in the house, it's gonna get a little sticky. <laughs> or if you're decorating, your Christmas trees, sometimes you can feel that sap. Just remember, it's how the evergreen trees survive the winter. Their sap doesn't freeze. <laughs> so there's their survival trick or adaptation or gift. And so now let's see 
how can we tell the difference between some of these branches that I've got here in my bowl? I'm going to change my camera to the tabletop so you can look too, and I hope that you will um, look at yours up close and you can see what I'm doing right here. Okay, so let's think, I hope that you brought at least three different kinds of, of branches with you. So let's start with, you know, like I said before, there's all kinds of evergreens that go around us. And I'm going to start with a pine needle. Ooh, can you see that? There we go. That's better. Now you can see it. Um, our state tree, it's the white pine. So what, if we were to go out and take a look at a, a white pine branch and look at it up close, well, the first thing I don't notice is it's got really long, soft needles. Isn't that cool? Yeah. But let's look really closely at how these needles are attached to the twig. See my twig? Okay, I'm going to use this. I don't know if you can see that or not. <laughs> but what you can do is take a look at it up close and see. Are there more than one needles where the, these are attached to the twig? I'm gonna get it a little closer. I'm gonna see, I'm gonna hold a little clump of needles. Oh, there's a whole clump attached to where it's attached to the twig. And let's take a look, I'm gonna pull one off. There we go. There's a whole, they were all attached together. And there, this one happened to be four because I think I lost one, but white pine needles are all attached right at the end. See that? Let's see if we can get that on camera. A magnifying glass. Can you see the end? There's a little end where they're all attached together. So I hope you're looking at that at your home. And I'm going to see if I can get one that has five because typically white pine trees have, oh yeah, this one does, have five needles attached together. Oops. <laughs> I think I just lost one. Nope. Okay, so let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's the white pine. And you can remember it this way. Spell white. W-H-I-T-E. White. White pine. <laughs> All right. So there's other pine trees out there. And let's see if I have any in my bowl that we can look at. Okay, let's see. I'm going to I'm going to go for long. Sometimes pine trees have really long branches. Oh, here's another pine and I'm going to look at it up close. This characteristic are more than one needles attached to the twig. And let's see if there are. Oh, here's where some needles are attached to a twig. Oh my goodness. There's two of them. Look at that. So this one is definitely another pine. It doesn't have five like the white pine, but it has two. Look at that. So this is long needle and two attached together. That is a pine. This one happens to be a red pine, I think. But remember that pine needles have clumps of needles attached to the twig. That's their characteristic. So I hope you found some pine needles out there to look at. Okay, so another common evergreen tree around my house is a balsam fir. So fir trees, let's see what's up with fir trees. I'm going to get out a fir tree branch. Oh, there we go. Now let's take a look at where the fir tree needles are attached to the twig. Oh, there's just one at a time. Can you see that? Okay, just one. Not a clump of needles, just one attached to the twig at the same time. Let me pull one of those off and take a look at it. Whoa, yeah. There it is. Just one. Hmm. Okay, so that is a characteristic of a fir tree. Just one needle attached to the twig at the same time. Now, let's take a look at the needle up really close. There's that needle. Okay, here we go. 
ah! <laughs> there it is. But I'm going to hold it in my hand. And it seems to me that it's really flat. Now, see if you can do it. If you have a, a fur, see if you can roll it. If you have a balsam fur, can you roll it between your thumb and your fingers? Oh, mine is so flat that it won't roll. So you know that you have a fir tree if you have one needle attached to the twig at the same time, and it's so flat that you can't roll it in your fingers. That's a fir tree. This one happens to be balsam. Okay, so let's see what else have I got here in my bag. <laughs> oh, I have a really, really, I have this one right here. Another one that's out there is this one happens to be kind of bluish green. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. And this one is a spruce tree. And let's take a look at what we can learn from this spruce tree with this. Let's take a look at how many needles are attached to the twig. Boy, it's kind of hard to tell because they're thick, aren't they? But I'm going to look really close. And I'm going to Look really close with my eyes, and oh yeah, there's just one at each space. So I pulled it off. I pulled off a spruce. So spruce are a little bit like balsam fir because they only have one needle <laughs> attached to the twig in, in each space where they're attached. But unlike the fir, see if you can roll that needle in your fingers. I can roll it. <laughs> I can roll it. It's not flat. It's more of a rounder. It's more of a rounder needle. So there you go. And if you take a look at it up close, let's see if we can do this. Well, you probably can't see it on camera, but it is much rounder and flatter than the needles of the fir tree. So spruce needles, yes, they're a little bit like fir because there's one needle attached on the twig, but the difference is their needles roll, <laughs> they're rounder. Okay, and I have another spruce here, I think. Yeah, but it's a, there's different kinds of fir trees, there's different kinds of spruce trees, but you can tell in general um, what kind they are. And this one, I'm gonna pull off a needle, shorter needles, and I'm gonna try to roll it. And it rolls, yes it is a spruce. <laughs> so I have two spruces. All right, so what do I have left? Oh, I have a really cool one. The last one we're going to take a look up at up close. This is a cedar. You've seen these probably out there. Now, these don't look very needly to me. Um, if you take a look at them up close, they look a little scaly, but they do stay evergreen. Whoops, can you see that? Can you see the scales? Maybe I'll try something different. Let's pull off one of these and hold it up a little closer. Can you see the scales? Almost like fish scales. If you have a piece of cedar, or next time you see um, a cedar branch that looks like this, take a look really, really close and see if you can see the scales. And the scales, they also have wax on them, but the scales, they overlap each other like fish scales, and that helps keep moisture inside as well. So that's one of their gifts, their adaptations. So, yeah, cedar. <laughs> and also, guess what? It's really flat, <laughs> and it's really soft, and it's not pokey at all because its, um, its leaves are really, really flat. So there, we've identified um, some evergreens. So I'm going to give you a little quiz. All right, here's this one, long needles and more than one needle attached to the twig. Is that fir, pine, or spruce? Ha, it's pine, right? <laughs> okay, so just one needle attached to the twig, and you can roll it between your fingers, is that Spruce or fir? You can roll it. It's a spruce. All right. So here's this one. One needle attached to the twig. Flat. <laughs> Is that spruce or fir 
or cedar. It's fur! <laughs> and the only one like it was scales. What do you think? Remember? Cedar! Okay, good. So we've identified some. So if you can keep those in your head about how to identify them, you're really going to be a great tree identifier. Great evergreen tree identifier. Okay, so what's next? Oh, all right. So we're going to go back to the regular camera for a minute or two. And let's smell some of this stuff. <laughs> I'm back. All right. So one of the things that I love so much about evergreen trees are the smell. And, you know, if you, if you get a, a real Christmas tree, you bring your tree into the house and it smells up your whole house. It smells really good. Or if you go out in the woods and you walk in the rain, um, you can smell all of the evergreen trees. But do all of these, there's the pine, there's the cedar, there's the balsam fir. Do they all smell the same? Why don't you find out? Take, if you brought some, um, if you brought some twigs and branches with you, take and do a scratch and sniff test and see if they all smell the same or if they're different. This is a cool experiment. So take your, take your fingernail and just rub it on your branch. Take a whiff. Hmm. This is, this one happens to be the cedar, remember? It smells like a cedar chest. <laughs> I wonder why. Yeah, you can get the scent. And I've heard that um, long ago, um, Native Americans used to put cedar in their hair because it would, uh, it would keep the mosquitoes away. So <laughs> that's a pretty strong smell. All right, so let's try. Oh, where's my white pine? I want to do white pine. Let's try pine. Okay, again, take some of the needles and rub your finger over it and hold it up to your nose. And see if you can smell. Yeah. Smell the difference. Test it out. Hmm, pine. That's that's a little more pinier. <laughs> and cedar. Can you smell the difference? Yeah, there we go. Let's try one more. A balsam fir. They are notorious for being really fragrant. They smell so good. So I got a little balsam fir twig and I'm gonna scratch and sniff again. Here we go. Oh, that's really good. That reminds me, that's, that's the total Christmas smell right there. <laughs> and here's, here's something that you can do, um, maybe for a gift for somebody, you know, um, and maybe after Christmas. Um, I've got a whole bunch of needles that have been falling off my branches. It, they smell really good. So if you have a Christmas tree that's dropping needles, <laughs> or you can go out, and go underneath a real tree and and pick up some. They still smell good even when they're dry. So you can get somebody like, or you can do it too, depending on where you are. You can get a, a pretty fabric and make a beanbag shape out of it and stuff it with as many needles as you can. And then whenever you pick up that, and then of course you'd sew all around it so the needles won't fall off. And then whenever you <laughs> pick it up and squish it, the scent from those needles, you'll be able to smell through the cloth. It's kind of a fun gift. But anyway, um, and it's a fun, easy gift for a kid to make for somebody. You could stuff it with cedar, keep your mosquitoes away, or you could stuff it with pine. <laughs> it would be fun. So that's a little bit about scent. They all smell different. Okay. All right, so let's, you know, we, we talked about how they're evergreen, and it's because they're still making food for the tree. They're still using chlorophyll, which is the chemical that turns, um, that, you know, gathers sunlight and turns the sugar into food for the tree. So they're still evergreen. So let's see if we can get a little bit of chlorophyll out of... <laughs> some of these branches. So if you brought with you a hammer and a board and a piece of paper, let's see if we can squish out some chlorophyll. All right, so I am going to do a little bit of cedar because that's kind of the easiest one I can get. And I'm going to fold, well, 
I'm going to fold my paper in half and stick it in between the fold, just like this. And I'm going to put it on my board. And this is going to sound loud. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm going to smack it all around where that leaf is. Okay? You ready? Ready for loudness? Here we go. Maybe you want to do that on the kitchen counter instead of my, you know, some, some surface that's really solid that you can put the board down, but you don't want to smack your kitchen counter. You want to smack the paper on the board. Here we go. One more time. There. Let's see what happens on the inside of my paper. Okay. All right. Now check it out. I don't know if you can see that up close. There we go. Wherever my leaf was, and I smushed it and smacked it with the hammer, it broke open the cells of the plant and the chlorophyll squished out. So it made a little print. Now, depending on, on how yours turned out, you could make a little card or something for somebody and write Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of cool. You can actually see the chlorophyll. Should I do one more? Should I do a pine? Yeah, I should. Um, I'll do that really quick. Um, I'm going to put a pine branch. Let's see what we get when we put the pine branch in there. We did cedar. That was an easy one. Let's see how easy it is to smush pine needles. Oh, yeah. That's working. Okay. Let's see what I got. Oh, cool. It's even, it's even a little bit more lighter green. See there at the top? Whoa, there we go. <laughs> so you can do it with any evergreen. Ooh, and it smells so good. Oh my gosh, my paper smells wonderful. Okay, so there we go. Um, so pine and fir and cedar and what else did I say? Spruce. They're all conifers. And that's, that's kind of a big word. But conifer actually means that it produces cones. So I have some cones, some pine cones here. Conifer is spelled C-O-N-I-F-E-R, <laughs> I think. <laughs> anyway, um, but it means the first part of the word conifer is cone, C-O-N. So there we go. So we're going to do a pine cone experiment. Let me get my bowl of greens out of the way. And what you need to do for this is a jar couple of jars, and I have a couple of different cones. Can you see this? Wait, okay, I'll hold it up. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I have a couple of different cones, and if you look at pine cones up close, they're all different from different trees. This one came from my red pine. This one came from my white pine. This one, I think, came from the spruce. And the cones actually produce the seeds. Now you can go out and, and get a cone and pull it apart and see if you can find the seeds inside because that's what they do, the cones keep the seeds um, protected all inside there. But look how they're open, look at how their petals are open. So we're gonna see if we can get them to close up and see maybe which pine cone um, closes up the fastest. So I'm gonna take two jars and I'm gonna stick some water in each. That's all you need. And you can experiment too, I just have regular cold water from the tap, but you could do one with hot water and see what happens. <laughs> and one with cold water and see what happens. But we're going to just do which pine cone closes up the first. Let's see what happens when we put them in the water. So I'm going to sink this pine cone in the water. It floats a little bit. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to put two white pine cones in there. Let's see what happens. And then maybe a spruce here and a white pine in there just to hold it down. And these are just jars, mason jars. And then let's watch and see what happens. Now, we'll come back to this. So I put my pine cones in the jars with their petals open. And we'll come back to that in a few minutes and see what happened to my pine cones. All right, there we go. Okay. So while we've got, oh, I know what I was gonna do. 
pine trees are really cool at the way they grow. And when you're out walking in the woods, here's a fun thing to try. See if you're the same age as one of the pine trees. Now right behind me, I have a fake tree. But the cool thing about fake trees is they imitate the real thing. And can you see, um, they have to, because then people buy them because they remind them of the real thing. So anyway, if you can see, there's levels of pine branches. Here's my hand on the first level. Here's my hand on the second level. Here's my hand on the third level. Here's a fourth. Here's a fifth. And then, oh, you can't see it, but there's the top growing up. <laughs> the way a pine tree grows is each year it sticks up a spike and then other branches grow out from it. So here's the first level of branches that grew out from the spike. Here's the second and the third and the fourth. And the fifth. so if you stand by a pine tree that's kind of smallish like this one, you can see how many years old it was. So stand and count the levels. Here's a level one, level two, two years, three years, four years, five years, probably six, probably seven, and then this would be eight. <laughs> Whoops, you can't see. That would be eight. And I'll show you that. So you can see if you're, how old your, your Christmas tree is, or how old a tree that you see out in the woods is. So here's, here's my picture. So there it goes, and then it goes out each year, and there's a spike, and then each year it sends out a new spike. See that? I'm holding it wrong. There we go. Vroom, 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 vroom. Levels. <laughs> Very cool the way it grows. Evergreens are so interesting. You can learn so much from them. And one last thing. A fun project to do. Just to remind you about how cool evergreens are. So, oh, how are my pine cones doing? They're starting to get closed up. This is sort of an ongoing project. It won't take too long, but we'll come back to those right at the end. So here's, here's another fun thing to do. And um, this isn't so much science as in just kind of really fun um, project. So I'm gonna put a whole bunch of pine cone branches. Whoops, I, have, I need my handy dandy cut everything scissors, sorry. Okay, and I'm gonna put a whole bunch of pine twigs. And this one I used a jar from peanut butter that's plastic so I wouldn't break. So I put in some white pine, and I put in some cedar, and I put in some, let's see, let's do, let's do some spruce. I'm gonna have to cut that one down. Put in some spruce, I'm gonna put those in there. Whoa, that's pretty, I think I need some balsam fir, don't you? So let me cut a couple of those off and stick it in there. Will that fit in there? Let's see, I'm putting all those in here in the jar. Ooh, cool, and I could, oh, here's a really tiny pine cone I found. I'm gonna put that in there. And then, I happen to have just a little bit of glitter left over from the holidays. You could put some of that in there too. <laughs> and some water. And what happens is water magnifies things. When you look through water, <laughs> it makes my nose look really big, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put some water in it. All those pine branches. And I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the top. Uh-oh, guess what? I'm gonna run out of water. I might have to borrow some from my science <laughs> pine cone experiment. <laughs> It'll be all right. Okay, here we go. Just borrow some of this water, it's okay. As full as you can get it and put on the top. Now you have all of those needles in there magnified. I don't know if that shows up on camera, but it certainly will when you make one. There we go. Whoa! And then you can look at it and go, yep, I know that there's a spruce in there. I know that there's a white pine in there. I can see the balsam fir. And it's all inside there. And it's a very pretty jar. Just to have around, sitting on your table for the holidays. And that is all of our experiments today. And we hope you had a great time looking at all of our 
evergreens. We hope you learned a little bit and join us again next time for First Step Science. Was it ah, a giant Tyrannosaurus Rex? And I'm just gonna stick some pine cones in my box, and um, then the fun starts. I just start rolling them around. The air rushing out of the balloon is gonna push that balloon up. So let's see what happens. All right, one, two, three. Oh, wow. So that's how rockets kind of work. We are going to build two different kinds of rockets today.